you know, if, if you're a logical, sensible person, you should be asking the question, what does a muscle do best? What does my pectoral muscle do best? What does my tricep do best? What does my side deltoid do best? If you're curious, as I was, when you just look around the gym and you see all these people doing all these different exercises, you should be asking the question, how are these different? Is one better than the other? Does it change the shape of the muscle? Are they all necessary? Once you whittle it down, you realize that most muscles, certainly every single muscle fiber, does one thing and one thing only. It pulls the insertion towards the origin. That's what it does. And it does it more forcefully when that insertion is farther away, and it does it less forcefully when the insertion is closer. That's the muscle strength curve. So when you, when you whittle all these things down, you find that there is such a thing as one or two best exercises for each muscle. You don't need all these supplemental muscles because that muscle does one thing best. The next thing it does, second best. The next thing it does, third best, fourth best. Why would you do first, second, third, and fourth best instead of just doing more of the first best? Logically speaking, right? This, this whole idea that you can work inner bicep, outer bicep, upper quad, lower quad, uh, inner thigh, outer thigh, inner calf, outer calf. Logically, it doesn't make sense. These aren't separate tendons. You don't have a te uh, one tendon for the outer calf and one for the inner calf. They converge on the Achilles tendon. They do one thing. The four quadricep heads converge on one quadricep tendon, patella tendon, the knee is a hinge joint, it does one thing. Right? You can narrow it down logically to these things. And, and then what ends up happening is you say, okay, well, what about changing it up? Don't I need variety? And you say, well, it doesn't make any sense that you would switch up something that's great for something that's compromised. That would be like saying, I want to get a suntan, I'm in UV light, I'm, I want to switch things up, I'm going to try incandescent light. I'm gonna try fluorescent light, I'm gonna try neon light. Yes, they're different, but they're not as good as UV light. You're better off just taking a break and going back to UV light. If you feel burnt out or you want some, a refresher of some sort, it just doesn't make sense. Once you understand that exercises are not all equal, right, that they're, they're different degrees of good, less good, less good, less good, less good. And once you understand that you can narrow it down, if you wanna do, a variety of exercises, then you understand that you're trading off value, that's okay, but at least you know it. When you narrow it down, it ends up being one or two exercises for each muscle group. And if you want to just be streamlined, if you want to be maximally efficient, then you do the one or two best exercises and you forego the ones that are compromised. Now, if, as I said, if you want to do stuff for fun, for variety's sake, and you know that those other exercises are compromised or have a higher injury risk or have a higher energy cost, then go ahead and do those. But, but it's important for you to not delude yourself into thinking that you're gonna get the best result possible with an exercise that only rates, let's say three or four on a scale of one to 10, right? So it boils down to about 20 exercises. Um, there are some substitutes, of course, but you know I call them the break 20, but they're 20 exercises. They're not magical, they're just the least compromised. They're the most efficient exercises of all the options that are out there. 